the new Zephyr model is almost on par with ChatGPT and that is possible due to a bunch of reasons and in this video we're going to explore what is this new model and how it is actually doing on par with ChatGPT and what is it not good at. Let's get started. The first thing that you need to understand is this is the second version of the Zephyr model. They had the first version of the Zephyr model, Zephyr 7 billion parameter alpha. So it's a 7 billion parameter model and it was the alpha model and now we have got the beta model. This model is coming from Hugging Faces Research Wing, Hugging Face H4. So this model is called a Zephyr 7 billion beta model. This is a fine tuned version of Mistral 7 billion parameter model. And unlike most other large language models that probably try to do RLHF reinforcement learning from human feedback, this model is opting out for a different alignment technique called direct preference optimization. By removing the inbuilt alignment, they managed to figure out that they have boosted the performance, benchmark performance on MT bench, which is a multi-turn benchmark. We have seen all these things in the past. I mean, this is nothing new. What is new is that if you see the way this model is performing on certain tasks, it in fact beats ChatGPT or it, I, I'm sorry, like it is on par with ChatGPT with the current data setup. Zephyr 7 billion parameter model, this green color, and you've got the Llama 2 70 billion parameter model, the chat model, GPT 3.5 turbo model, Claude 1, GPT-4. So this is like literally stacking up against the giants. And if you see this on writing, on role play, on humanities, this is, for example, on role play, this is doing better than Llama to 70 billion chat, 70 billion chat model. If you see, let's say GPT-3.5 turbo, it's somewhere on par. And you've got Claude 1, somewhere very close and you can see this you can see a very similar pattern on humanities writing role play stem the problem starts uh, especially like even if you compare it with reasoning gpt4 is way ahead in reasoning but the problem starts with math and coding so this is a model that is extremely good at for example stem humanities writing role play reasoning but not so good at coding ex coding extraction and math and uh, hugging face cto thomas wolf uh, has uh, put together like a nice four or five points explaining what is happening behind the scene why is the model good at certain things? Why is the model not good at certain things? First of all, start with the strongest pre-trained model that you can find. So they used the Mistral 7 billion parameter model and they built on top of it. Scale human preference annotations. So time and time again, people have figured out that GPT-4 is really a good annotator than human beings. What is annotation? So you've got a bunch of text. You need to label certain aspects of it. For example, you want to, let's say, classify whether it is positive or negative. You want to generate some responses to a prompt so that you can create synthetic data set. So what they have managed to figure out is that they know that GPT-4 is on par with average human annotators. So you can scale up data annotation with GPT-4. And that is how a data set has been built that is called ultra feedback data set. So if you see the data set that they have used, so that data set that they've used is called ultra chat and ultra feedback data set. And that is something that you can go see what is a prompt and what kind of responses that it has been given. So that is the second reason. And the third reason is replacing reinforcement learning with human feedback in favor of DPO direct preference optimization. Not only just it helps in scale, but it also doing better in, you know, giving a stable training procedure. And then finally, or the one before everything else is don't be scared of overfitting or, or on preference data set. I think this is, plays a very important role in what we just discussed before. So what they actually let the model do is they let the model overfit. So typically what we tell in machine learning is do not let your model overfit. Like that's why you usually have a test data set or a validation data set, a preference data set. And whenever your loss goes up for that data set, you know that your model is overfitting, not just as necessarily learning the signal, but it's also learning the noise. So you would typically train, stop the training process, fall back to somewhere in this particular range. But what they have decided to do is they have decided to let the model overfit. So e so that the model actually performs better outside of whatever it is. And uh, this is a 
particularly an area I think there is more research required. So they've said, okay, this might be counterintuitive. While the training and test loss of DPO training shows signs of overfitting on the feedback data set after just one epoch, training further still shows significant improvements on downstream tasks even up to three epochs without signs of performance regression. And that's what you're seeing. One epoch starts overfitting, but they went ahead with three epochs and there was no signs of performance regression. And this is definitely a behavior that requires more deeper understanding. And probably like personally for me, this could be one reason why you would not see really good results on coding, math, which are very objective task defined tasks. But in the other hand, these are like quite subjective, like, you know, you can have different tastes, different flavors and different preference. All these reasons are really good. Share everything openly, the recipes, the code, the model, the data set, all these are going to be available. And I think that is the greatest point that we have got. Like when ChatGPT came out, everybody was so pumped up there, like ChatGPT, this is revolutionary. Definitely at that time it was revolutionary. But the point is today, as of today, like which is 28th October, um, you probably have got a chat GPT level model that can run locally with four bit or eight bit quantization. And if you have got like a powerful CPU, you don't even need quantized model. You can run probably an unquantized model on a powerful consumer hardware. I think that is quite possible because people share everything openly. Mistral team decided to share things openly. Um, Hugging Face team decided to build Zephyr uh, Alpha first, the, the, the Zephyr model, and now they've got the Zephyr 7 billion parameter model thanks to the Stanford University team that shared DPO, thanks to the ultra feedback data set and bunch of other things that led to the point where we are. So before I go further, I decided to check out the model. I thought, okay, fine. I go to the LLM monitor benchmark and I pick one question where GPT 3.5 model did not do good, but the GPT-4 model do good. What is the question? Reply with only the following text without grammatical errors or misspellings. They super large elephant jumped over the lazy sheep. So this is basically trying to understand whether the large language model can actually say the super large elephant jumped over the lazy sheep. GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is the default model of chat GPT, did not do good on this particular question. So I thought, okay, let me go ask Zephyr model the same question. So I said exactly the same thing and <laughs> somehow it goes into like different directions. It comes up with like a German answer. It comes up with a Portuguese answer. It comes up with a Dutch answer. And finally it says, okay, the exceedingly large elephant jumped over the lazy sheep. So it managed to answer properly, which GPT 3.5 Turbo did not answer. But before I raise your hope, I decided to check out one more question, which is what are the five closest planets to the sun? Reply only with a valid JSON array of objects formatted like this. So the good thing about this response, the JSON is a valid response properly formatted. The bad thing about this response is Mercury, Venus, somehow it decided to skip Earth, then Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. I don't know if it understood um, sun or because we said distance from earth, whether it tries to distance like all the planets from earth. I don't know what is going on here. So the JSON object is fine, but the answer is not correct. So what am I trying to say? This is a really, really good model. This is a good model on benchmarks. This is a good model on multi-turn chart, which is an empty bench benchmark. That's what is measuring. Like you can have multiple conversation, but still I think this model is not really good at a lot of other things like coding, extraction and math. That is definitely what we need to check this model with. And if you see the benchmark, for example, if you compare this model on two benchmarks, the empty benchmark and the alpaca evil, you can see this model scoring a really good score, even much, much higher than the Mistral base model, which has scored 6.84 on empty bench, which this has scored 7.34, which is even better than the Zephyr 7 billion alpha model. And even when you compare it with GPT 3.5 turbo, this model is somewhat on par with that. And on the Alpaca Evil, GPT 3.5 turbo has scored 89. This model has scored 90, which is, you know, way above like way above the GPT 3.5 turbo and closer to Lama 2 chart the 70 billion parameter model which has scored 92. So 
bottom line, we have got a really good 7 billion parameter model that can run on consumer hardware, GPU, CPU, and a lot of different devices with without quantization. I'll make a separate video about how to run the model. Meanwhile, you can go to this particular link, which I link it in the YouTube description to check out the model. And also I'll link all the required links in the YouTube description for you to directly kick and then start reading about this model in itself. I hope this video was helpful to you in learning about the new Zephyr 70 billion parameter model, the better model, which is doing better with respect to even the 70 billion or the chat GPT models. See you in another video. Happy prompting.